Step into the wonderful world of the 1944 movie Kismet. It's full of surprises, laughs, and touching moments. Each character in this classic film is interesting in their own way. Do you have a favorite character? Or maybe a special memory connected to this movie? Share your stories below as we explore fun and moving facts about this timeless film. Now it's your turn. What's your favorite memory or experience with this beloved movie? Share in the comments and let's celebrate the magic of Kismet together. The 1944 movie Kismet left a big mark on cinema and it's still important today. The movie is known for its interesting story, colorful characters, and memorable music. It talks about fate, love, and destiny, which many people still connect with. One reason why it's still remembered is because it talks about things everyone understands. The characters go through struggles and successes that anyone can relate to. Even today, the dilemmas they face are familiar to modern audiences, which keeps the movie timeless. Kismet also changed how people see Middle Eastern culture. It showed it in a new light, breaking old ideas, and showing a more real picture of the region. The movie's beautiful sets, costumes, and atmosphere set a standard that filmmakers still look up to. In summary, Kismet's impact comes from its relatable themes, catchy music, and how it showed Middle Eastern culture. It's still talked about today because of its influence on movies and culture. In an interesting story from Life magazine, it was revealed that Marlene Dietrich, a famous figure in movies, had her legs covered in four shiny layers of gold paint. Also, her hair was lightly sprinkled with powdered gold, adding an extra charm to her already fascinating presence, especially for her exotic dance scene in a specific movie. Surprisingly, another dance scene with her was cut from the final version, but unexpectedly appeared in an Abbott and Costello comedy called Lost in a Harem. Marlene Dietrich's performance was so powerful and alluring that it was deemed too provocative for TV audiences at the time, leading to its removal from broadcasts. Only in recent years has this captivating piece of film history been lovingly restored to its rightful place. Truly, the influence of Marlene Dietrich and the charm of her performance still hold strong today. Based on the original play by Edward Knobloch, two earlier film adaptations were made. The first version was released in 1920 and is still available. Warner Brothers produced the second adaptation in 1930, which is considered lost. In 1958, the film was retitled Oriental Dream to avoid confusion with a later musical remake. It aired in black and white due to limited color broadcasting. However, its original Technicolor version is now occasionally shown on Turner Classic Movies. During filming, Kismet, Marlene Dietrich, the lead actress, started wearing a flesh-colored nylon body stocking from neck to crotch. This foundation garment helped maintain her youthful figure as she aged, becoming a staple in her wardrobe for the rest of her life. In one memorable scene, Dietrich's pantaloon costume, designed by Karinska, made a statement with its unique construction. Crafted from half-inch metal rings wired together to mimic chiffon fabric, the costume produced jingling sounds as Marlene approached the set for a Jack Cole choreographed dance. However, during filming, the rings unexpectedly fell apart prompting Marlene to improvise by having her legs painted gold. Unaware of the risks, she kept the metallic paint on her legs throughout the sequence, unaware that it could have been fatal due to block circulation. Another noteworthy aspect of the film was Frances Ramsden's debut, marking a significant moment in her career. Karnska's talents extended beyond the set of the movie Kismet. Borrowed by Raoul Pien Du Bois at Paramount, she undertook the task of rebuilding the notorious mink for the mink's gown worn by Ginger Rogers in the Kurt Weill musical Lady in the Dark. Interestingly, both films were filmed and initially released in glorious technicolor. These incidents provide a glimpse into the challenges and creative solutions encountered during the making of the film, highlighting the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the individuals involved. During the production of a musical film at Paramount Studios, there was a need for some creative problem solving. The mink skirt costume made for Ginger Rogers in another film was too heavy for practical use. Barbara Kernska, a skilled costume designer, came to the rescue. She reconstructed the mink skirt, making it lighter and more manageable for Rogers to wear during performances. Originally a Broadway play, Kismet had its run in New York City from December 1911 to June 1912, totaling 184 performances. As the film adaptation took shape, Various talented individuals contributed to its realization. Edith Head designed modern day dresses for Ginger Rogers in the film, while Raoul Peen Du Bois handled costume and set design for the Circus Dream musical sequences. Director Mitchell Lysen, known for his creativity, provided input for the scenery and costumes, including a remarkable mink fur skirted gown adorned with jewels for Rogers. 
The first version of the gown, costing a substantial amount to produce, proved too heavy for Rogers to wear comfortably. Karenska, collaborating on another film across town, was urged to remake the gown. She crafted a lighter version, lined with sequins, making it more suitable for Rogers' dance sequences. The original gown with paste glass jewels found its way to the Smithsonian Institution, while the altered version returned to the studio's inventory after filming. Karenska's pivotal role in redesigning Roger's costume went uncredited, despite her significant contribution to the production. However, her ingenuity ensured that Rogers could perform gracefully in the film's musical numbers, enhancing the overall cinematic experience. In the backstage anecdotes of the 1944 movie, a surprising encounter unfolded between actress Gloria Dehaven and the iconic Marlene Dietrich. Dehaven, preparing for a musical at MGM, found herself in an unexpected hair washing session with Dietrich, who lent a hand to shampoo her head. Behind the scenes, Broadway choreographer Jack Cole played a pivotal, albeit uncredited, role in shaping the film's dance sequences. Cole not only crafted the harem dance routines, but also honed Marlene Dietrich's exotic movements for a special dance routine. This collaboration extended to the 1955 MGM musical adaptation, where Cole returned to replicate and restage his Broadway choreography for the film. The New York Times 1944 review of MGM's production noted James Craig's personable portrayal of the Caliph. However, an interesting aside mentioned his southern accent, amusingly labeling him the Caliph of Baghdad on the Swanee. This minor quirk added a unique touch to Craig's performance. In the midst of Hollywood's golden era, Kismet brought together unexpected encounters, uncredited contributions, and amusing nuances, shaping the film beyond what met the audience's eye. In the 1944 movie Kismet, the costume designer Irene Lentz, who was married to MGM art department supervisor Cedric Gibbons' brother, was credited for costume design. However, all the costumes were actually designed by Karenska, who Irene had brought from New York City to execute the costumes at MGM's Culver City lot. Before the 1944 adaptation, the first film version of Kismet was produced by the British in 1914. Edward Knobloch, the original author of the play, was credited for writing the script of this adaptation. Directed by Liedem Bantock, who also managed British Productions Distribution Zenith Film Company, this earlier rendition set the stage for subsequent adaptations. In the movie, there's an iconic scene where Marlene Dietrich's legs are painted gold. This decision came about as a last resort after attempts to encase her legs in fine mesh tights failed. Initially, the mesh was crafted like chain mail, but upon realization that Dietrich couldn't move, they resorted to painting her legs gold instead. The production of Kismet in 1944 marked a significant moment in cinema history with its elaborate costumes and memorable scenes showcasing the talent and creativity of those involved in bringing the story to life. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Cinematography, Best Music, Best Sound, and Best Art Direction, this film boasts a distinguished production team. An uncredited Frank Morgan serves as the narrator, introducing the characters and plot at the film's onset. His narration sets the stage for the unfolding narrative, guiding audiences through the intricacies of the story without directly participating in the action. This understated yet crucial role adds depth to the storytelling, enhancing the audience's understanding of the plot and characters. Through Morgan's narration, viewers are seamlessly immersed into the world of the film, setting the tone for the events that follow. 